Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video we will start a new topic called magnetic field. Now electrostatics and magnetostatics are part of the same broad topic which is now called electromagnetism. But historically electricity and magnetism were considered to be two separate uh, phenomena. Electricity had to do with rubbing of stuff together like rubbing of a comb on your hair and then attracting pieces of paper or rubbing a glass rod with silk. But magnetism had to do with specific materials like iron or other magnetic materials and compasses and the north pole and stuff like that. So they were not considered part of the same thing but eventually Faraday proved that a changing electric field could actually produce a magnetic field and a changing magnetic field could produce an electric field. And after that the study of magnetism really accelerated because we saw the patterns in magnetism really mirrored the patterns in electricity. So what I'd like to do right now is something unorthodox. I'm going to write down everything we'll be learning in the next few videos and just show you how the pattern really is similar to what we've learned already in electricity. So this is electricity, this is magnetism. The first thing is electric forces, electric fields, electric interactions are created by charges. Right, and electrostatics is when charges are stationary that means they are not moving what happens when a charge moves it creates what is called an electric current so the analog of charges in magnetic field is actually electric current and this was the biggest surprise and one of the biggest differences between electricity and magnetism Uh, there are certain things which we've called electric charges which simply create forces between them But there are no magnetic charges at any rate none have been found in nature till date The only things that produce magnetism as far as we can tell are moving electric charges which constitute an electric current Right, so this is the first difference in this video I'm just going to outline everything in the next video. We'll actually start learning these things in detail right now. What is electrostatics? it means the charge is stationary so what is the analog of magnetostatics in magnetostatics obviously charge can't be stationary then current would be zero in magnetostatics we have stationary current or the word generally used is steady current it means the current is not changing with time so just like initially we talked about charges which were situated at a particular point which was electrostatics and then we moved on to current electricity. First we'll talk about electric currents which are constant. That means an electric current of 5 ampere going throughout the wire. No changing with time. Right. So that is what is called stationary or the preferable word when you're talking about current is steady currents. Right. What are the forces between electric charges? They are given by Coulomb's law which states that F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square this is coulomb's law analogous to that in magnetic fields we have what is called the biot savart law and it has a formula b is equal to mu naught by 4 pi i this is a small electric field actually dB just like we might be talking about small electric fields here right uh, dB is equal to mu naught for 4 by I dl cross R by R cube now again we'll see a few differences first I talked about the force here but we'll not begin with talking about forces in terms of magnetism right we started with forces in terms of Coulomb's law and then we wrote what is called the formula for electric field which is also directly derived from Coulomb's law and then the analogous to electric field if you want to calculate the actual electric field you just have to integrate these so there are slight differences but the electric field has an analogous magnetic field now from go going from field to force is quite easy in electricity because the other formula we use is F is equal to Q times E right so Coulomb's law tells us the electric field generated by charges then this formula tells us what is the force experienced by charges in that field so we have biot savart law which tells us the magnetic field created by currents. I is the current. We'll see all these terms later on in the next video. And analogous to that, we have another equation which tells us 
what a charge experiences in a magnetic field and that equation is F is equal to Q times V cross B or another form of that would be I times L cross R. Now what that means is this, if this charge is Q then V is the velocity of Q. So again, if V is 0, F will be 0. That means a charge will only experience a force due to a magnetic field if it is moving. So again, it is basically a current. So only currents can create magnetic field and only moving charges or currents can experience magnetic fields. Right. Now the difference is going from this to this step is easy because this equation is quite simple. But these equations have cross products and they are quite complicated. So the study of magnetostatics will be divided into two parts unlike the study of electrostatics. In electrostatics we did these two things in the same video within a few minutes because this equation was easy. In magnetostatics first we'll study how a magnetic field is created by a current and later on we'll study what a current experiences when it is placed inside the magnetic field. But this equation is analogous to this equation, this equation is analogous to this equation but slightly more complicated. Right. Another very uh, similarity is you have dipoles which are Q times D and here you have magnetic dipoles which are basically mu is equal to I times A. Right. We'll see these uh, terms in detail later on. The only thing I'm trying to show is it's completely similar. Electric charges, electric current. Statics means charges are stationary. Statics means currents are stationary. Coulomb's law tells us electric field by a charge. Biot's law tells us magnetic field by a current. This tells us force on charge due to electric field. This tells us force on current due to magnetic field. This is an electric dipole. This is a magnetic dipole. An electric dipole on, it, on its axis exerts an electric field of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught P 2 P by d cube where P is the dipole moment. A magnetic dipole exerts a magnetic field at an axial point mu naught by 4 pi to mu by d cube. So we see that these equations are exactly similar. Another similarity which I just forgot to mention, here you have epsilon naught which is called the permittivity of free space. Here you have view mu naught which is called permeability of free space. So permittivity, permeability. Then we later on saw conductors and insulators and materials in which this epsilon naught had to be replaced by an epsilon which was the permittivity of that material. Often this mu naught will be replaced later on by mu which will be the permittability of that material. Right. So you see so many uh, similarities, the patterns are completely similar. There are two major differences. One is good and one is bad in terms of the complexity. Right. So the good thing is that the magnetic force is V cross B. Right. V is the direction of velocity. So the magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity. What happens when the force is perpendicular to the velocity? No work is done. So magnetic forces never do any work. And so just like we had a concept of electric potential and electric potential energy, we do not have any concept of magnetic potential or magnetic potential energy. And that makes things quite easier. Actually, if you study in uh, higher uh, classes, then you, we have constructed an artificial thing called a magnetic potential from we can derive a magnetic field just like we can derive electric field from electric potential. But it doesn't have the meaning related to energy like electric potential does because magnetic forces do no work. Right. So this is the good thing. The bad thing, this electric field also this I forgot to put the unit vector here in the direction of R. Electric field is in the radial direction and the force on a charge is along the electric field. Here the magnetic field is perpendicular to the radial direction R. It is perpendicular to the current. So we have to invoke cross products and cross products we know are quite difficult to work with compared to dot products. Similarly F is equal to QE. So the force will be in the direction of electric field. The force on the current is not in the direction of magnetic field. It's actually perpendicular to the magnetic field. So these cross products actually make the mathematics somewhat complicated but if you are skilled enough to completely differentiate between physics and mathematics you will see that physics is pretty much the same except for symbols being changed around. Right. So in the next video we start in detail with our version of Coulomb's law that is the biot savart law and we will see how a moving charge or a current can actually produce a magnetic field. 
the difference will be we will not focus on a force on a charge due to a magnetic field now we'll save that for another video because these two things are really don't have anything to do with one another and this doesn't come as naturally as this uh, another thing I'd request for you in this particular unit is normally when I'm teaching I can use my thumb uh, and my right hand to show the direction of cross products right because we use the right hand thumb rule but I can't do that on the screen so whenever I'm talking about directions I'd request you to really focus on the cursor because through the cursor I'm going to try to make arrows and tell you what the direction of vectors is but to use that you'll have to use the right hand thumb rule the direction of A cross B is you put your hand towards A and move towards B and the direction of the thumb will be the direction of A cross B. Oh, I forgot. There's also one big, big, big similarity between the two. So, Coulomb's law tells us the electric field is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R squared R hat. And similarly, biot savart law tells us that the magnetic field of we we'll start with the small magnetic field is equal to and the reason I start with the small magnetic field by the way is because you can have a very small charge and that will give a very small electric field and you can increase the charge in the electric field increase proportionally that's not necessarily true for magnetic fields so that's why we talk about it DB and that we and then we integrate it so it is mu naught by 4 pi I times DL cross R by R Q and we have F is equal to Q E and we have F is equal to Q times V cross B or another form we will see is I times L cross R or sometimes I times D L cross R. Now Coulomb's law and biot savart law they are actually when you try to apply them to extended objects they are somewhat complicated and the mathematics is somewhat complicated so from coulomb's law we were able to derive another law called gauss law which make things very easy all it said was integral of e dot ds over a closed surface is equal to q enclosed by epsilon naught right now even though gauss law is always true not necessarily always helpful we saw that it was helpful in these three special cases which involved particular symmetries. Similar to Gauss law, we actually have in the case of magnetism, Ampere's law. And it looks very similar to Gauss law. The cyclic integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught times the current enclosed. The one big difference is this is a surface integral over a surface. This is a line integral over a loop. For example, this might be a loop. It's a two-dimensional loop, but here we have a three-dimensional surface like this. You get the picture, a cuboid or cube, right? But other than that, Ampere's law is also always valid, but it is only useful in certain special kinds of symmetries. And why is that the case? Here we could get E dot ds integral to be Q enclosed by epsilon naught, but only in special cases of symmetries could we write integral of E dot ds as something more simpler, like E multiplied by something. Similarly, integral of B dot dl we can get easily, but only in special cases of symmetries will we be able to use integral of B dot dl and write it as something simpler, maybe B into 2 pi r or something like that and be able to get the magnetic field directly. So these are also very analogous. Both are true, but no, both are not always useful. They are only useful in the case of special symmetries. In the next video, we will start off with biot savart law, our, our analogous version of Coulomb's law. Then we will move on to this equation and then finally Ampere's law. Thank you.